This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building a website and running your online business. Ellen Curris's career as a cinematographer spans multiple forms and genres over a few decades. Documentaries, high-budget movies, indie feature films, music video shorts, she's done it all. Her work stands out as being representative of her own point of view and is characterized by visual metaphors that reflect the meaning of the story being told. In this episode, I'll show how Ellen Curas's philosophy on creating images and the gear that she uses informs her own cinematography style. American DP Ellen Curas was led into film through studying anthropology, where she had to produce documentary projects. Her first notable film as a cinematographer was a short documentary in Cambodia, which received the Eastman Kodak Best Cinematography Focus Award, won an Academy Award in the student film competition and screened at Sundance. That same year, she shot Swoon, her first dramatic feature film, which kick-started her career as a cinematographer. She shot a range of projects for a range of well-known directors, as well as working as a director herself, some of her collaborators include Michelle Gondry, Mon Scorsese, Spike Lee, Jim Jarmusch, and Sam Mendes. There's kind of a different environment now in the world of cinematography. You can make a film with your iPhone. So the question becomes, what distinguishes you from another person who's making a film? Curious believes the answer to this question lies in the point of view or perspective that the DP brings to her project. She uses her perspective to create visuals that reflect the meaning of the story which is being photographed, a lesson she learned early in her career when she hired someone else to shoot her anthropology master's thesis film in the 1980s. It was really beautifully shot, but it was missing something. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, I was just like, it doesn't move me. Even though the film looked beautiful, it was missing the connection of a visual metaphor which connected to the core of the film. Therefore, it felt empty. From that moment on, she picked up the camera and began shooting documentaries. She challenged herself to be cognizant of the form of the photography and to sculpt it to suit the film's meaning. Every single shot has a story to it. Every single time you pan the camera, there's a reason for it. There's a reason why you choose the lenses you do. Why do a dolly move? Because it looks like a cool shot, maybe, but then what does it mean? You have to understand that when we see something, we perceive it visually as an audience and it affects us. Curious paired her awareness of the visual language with the core requirement of a DP, which is to translate the director's vision to the screen. Sometimes this required deviating from her own preferences in order to service the desires of the director. She likes building up a kind of telepathy between the director and cinematographer. In order to create this relationship, gain an intimate knowledge of the story, and to make herself familiar with the director's vision for the film, she insists on extensive pre-production prep. For long-form narrative work, she requests at least four days with the director before the shoot starts. She dislikes taking time on set to do this as it loses the production valuable shooting time. Curious uses this knowledge to translate the director's descriptions and feelings about the story into photographic form by making technical decisions. For example, on Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, the language had to be organic and dynamic to add naturalism and imperfection to the relationship of the characters and avoid the film becoming static. To create this visual metaphor, they made the decision to shoot handheld, using longer takes, and not being precious about the shots being steady or traditionally cinematic. This added an emotional layer to the camera work, which was the right visual tone for the movie. One of the first questions she asks herself when crafting a visual language for the film is whose point of view the story or a particular moment needs to be told from. She emphasizes that it's especially important for cinematographers to be aware of this in documentaries, where DPs may sometimes have to shoot portions of the film without the director being present. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. 
If you'd like to build a career as a cinematographer or any creative, it's important that you have a portfolio of your work online. Squarespace provides the tools to easily build and manage your website or online store. Setting up a site on Squarespace is an easy and intuitive process. It guides you down the path of beautiful design, making the process of creating an aesthetically pleasing space for your work simple. Their sleek portfolio layouts allow you to create a professional looking display of your creative work by including customizable galleries of images and videos. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash indepthcine to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. I was asking everybody, I was like, listen, do you know anybody who has a used camera that I can buy? Somebody said, oh, talk to that guy over there. He's an equipment dealer. I talked to him, and he turned out he had just got an SR2. I borrowed money, I you know, begged my parents, and I bought this camera. And it changed my life. Owning her first 16mm camera, the Ari SR2, allowed her access to shoot whenever she needed including on her first notable documentary project in Cambodia. She also built up a familiarity with the camera in her early career, which allowed her to operate it effectively and efficiently as an extension of herself. Unlike some DPs, Curas is not precious about sticking to a particular set of lenses, cameras or film stocks. She changes her selection of gear depending on the needs of the project. She's used 35mm film cameras such as the Panavision Millennium and Platinum, the Aricam Studio and Lights, and of course her own Ari SR2 for 16mm. While most of her work has been on celluloid, she started using the Sony Venice for jobs that need a digital camera, which she occasionally supplemented with the A7S II. The lenses she's used have included Panavision C and E series anamorphics, the Vintage Cook Extel Express Anamorphics, Zeiss Super Speeds, and Cook S4s. However, she doesn't limit herself to prime lenses and likes using zooms such as the Cook Vera Kinetel 16mm zoom or the Angenu Optimo range. When she was starting out, she pushed against the zeitgeist that cinematographers should only use primes due to the inferior optical quality of zoom lenses. Zooms gave her the opportunity to make subtle movements in or out without being too prescribed. On Swoon, she did push-ins at the end of a take to bookend scenes after the director called cut to capture the actors doing a physical release. Curis tells the story of getting the blessing of legendary DP Sven Yikvis to use zooms. He told her to follow whatever she feels, her point of view, and let the choices in gear be dictated by that. She likes finding creative solutions and isn't afraid of limiting her selection of film gear on a job. For example, on Eternal Sunshine, she didn't use a regular dolly at all and instead opted for a doorway or sled dolly, or sometimes even a wheelchair, which the camera operator sat on with a handheld camera on the shoulder while her grip tracked. Some overhead shots were also done on a rideable GF8 crane, an operated handheld on the shoulder rather than off a stabilized head or a fluid head, as is the norm. She likes including practical lighting fixtures on locations. Sometimes she supplements these with various single light bulbs rigged to dimmers. Her longtime gaffer, John Nadeau, fabricated a creative custom light rig with four clip lights to a C-stand, which was shaped and controlled by using black wrap. They could position this to create a realistic quality of practical light. She likes supplementing existing light with added film lights. For example, in a street exterior night scene, she rigged additional sodium vapor lights onto telephone poles to augment the existing street lights. Curis has used different Kodak and Fuji stocks over her career. However, she took a particular liking to Fujifilm stocks, such as Riola 500D, due to its cooler cyan bias in the shadow areas, its saturation, and grain. Again, this went against the status quo of the time that shadow should be pure black without cyan. While at times Ellen Curis' style may have gone against the grain of traditional cinematography conventions, her decisions were always motivated by her point of view, 
which use visual metaphors to enforce the story. While she's certainly technically proficient and a solid camera operator, she claims her most valuable asset to be her point of view. That's what truly and uniquely identifies and differentiates each DP from another. If you enjoyed this episode of Cinematography Style, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments who else you'd like to see featured in this series. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.